I have wondered, is there a better alternative to the pollster child of prosumer network gear, Unify? It wasn't perfect, but they have been serving me fairly well for the last three and a half years. But is there a better option? Especially if I decided to pay extra and reach out to the higher tier, the real enterprise grade gears. Will I see the enough difference in end user experience for the money? Or should I be just happy with Unify and say it's the best I can get? I couldn't find a good real world comparison, especially for home use, multi access point setting between prosumer and enterprise graded gears. So I've decided to do this myself. Let's get started. After pondering for a potential alternative to my current home's full Unify Wi-Fi setup, I've concluded to try out Rokus. For those of you who have never heard of the brand, Rokus is enterprise-grade gear brand that competes with the brands like Cisco Meraki, HPE, Aluba. School or corporation around you may be using these products. Rokus is often acclaimed for having superior hardware quality even within the enterprise market. As in other true enterprise setup, Rukus have subscription-based controller and service for full operation, which include AI analytics. But as a home user, we are looking at license-free firmware version, Rukus Unleashed. Despite not subscribing or paying for license, these are real enterprise-grade hardwares. They just use different firmware. So if someone ever wants to use this for full-blown real enterprise setup, they can use the exact same hardware but install different firmware. If you are interested in why I chose Rukus Unleashed over other competing manufacturer brands, please watch the other episode for this thought process. Though I have rarely used this option, in US, we can return most of Amazon product for free refund within 30 days of purchase even if they were opened. This is important because I have not yet committed to Rokus. This is rather a trial for me. For this reason, I have limited my original purchase through Amazon even though I saw cheaper listing on eBay. Also, I limited myself originally to only 2 AP despite I was fairly certain that I would need more than 2 access points to get equivalent range of coverage for five access points set up in Unify. After deciding to use Rukus, I needed to choose an AP model. It was important here to ensure I chose the model that supports Unleashed firmware because not all Rukus access points support Unleashed. Since my current Unify setup is mostly Wi-Fi 6 capable and I have a handful of Wi-Fi 6 compatible devices, I have decided to go with Wi-Fi 6 compatible access points. Even though Rukus currently have couple Wi-Fi 6E model on their website, they do not support Unleashed. I've also decided to go with ceiling mount models rather than in-wall or wall mount models. Amongst these, R850 was the top of the line. Two main feature this model serves better than the lower models are 160GHz channel bandwidth and 8x8 MIMO. Although 160MHz can be important feature for some, none of Apple products supports this in 5GHz band. And since I get DFS strike in my home, so this was not a feature I could use. 8x8 MIMO have two potential advantages. One is in a setting of MU MIMO capable clients simultaneous max throughput. But I never find MU MIMO to truly work and it may be due to limitation of iOS device. Then more realistic benefit would be if 8x8 meant to be dual band 5 GHz and if Rukus supports dedicated mesh link, it will be important for mesh setup. However, I won't be using mesh setting as I will be wiring every access point. So R850 
was eliminated for my case. I've then decided to pass on R650 as this model was priced higher than the superior model R750 on Amazon. I've also came across couple online posts specifically stating to have issue with this particular model. So, three potential models to consider were R750, R550, and R350. I think one can make argument for any of these models. R350 would be a good choice to try Ruka's Wi-Fi 6 experience while keeping the price range reasonably close to Unify gear, especially if you consider purchasing through eBay. R550 would be a good option with under $100. More, you get better Wi-Fi coverage than R350. In the end, I ended up choosing R750 as it has better Wi-Fi range rating. So I had a bit of hope two units of these may be sufficient to cover most of my home. In trial stage, I've decided to only deploy two Rukus AP as the four or five Unify AP setup replacement. I did not expect full corner-to-corner -corner performance improvement over the Unify with half number of access points with Rukus, but I thought this should give me enough data points to compare to setup and make fairly accurate educated guess how many more Rukus access points I would need to achieve similar or better coverage and range performance to my Unify setup, if that's the route I decided to go with. For the actual placement of access points, one access point was set in kitchen as it's the center of our home. This is one of the most Wi-Fi demanding area in our household. This was where recently broken U6 mesh was sitting. Since our home is two stories with walkout basement, there are areas that are quite Wi-Fi unfriendly in the lower basement level. In order to try covering these areas better, I have tried a few different placement of the second Rukus access point. First, I placed it in the basement hallway in place of U6 Pro access point. I've also tried basement entertainment area placement where Unify SHD access point was located. Both resulted in creation of dead spot. So I eventually placed in ground level family room corresponding to the one of U6 Pro access point location. This achieved entire house with 5 GHz band Wi-Fi coverage, just with two access points. All tests otherwise specified used iPhone 14 Pro Max, which is 2x2 Wi-Fi 6 capable client. Throughput were measured using local network 30 seconds continuous IPARF test to my local NAS server. To reduce Wi-Fi variation, I have ran 2-3 to three times of IPARF test at the same spot and recorded more reflective data result. For example, if one test result were much slower than the another, then repeat and use the one of the tests that looked similar. This is because rest of my home network as well as Wi-Fi were in use during these tests. Whenever I was testing one system, I had the other system's all access point completely powered off to ensure no interferences from them. Since I'm just a casual network hobbyist, I can't just buy a full system to match two multi-access point system setup to give true Apple to Apple level comparison. So current comparisons have couple limitations. First, the major difference is that Ruka's setup used in this comparison has only two access points while Unify had four. Second, Unify access point positions were optimized for original five access point setup. The one that died was located in the middle of home kitchen, where one of Lucas AP is now placed. So if I were to truly optimize Unify setup, I should have repositioned four access points. Throughout this video, I will try to pick data points where these limitations have a minimal to no effect when comparing two system setups. For the comparison, I have looked at following categories. Performance, stability, features, simplicity, cosmetic, scalability, and cost. 
Let's start with performance relative comparison. The common elements represented in this category are throughput and range. The first number we will look at is the throughput. Perhaps everyone's favorite when comparing networks because it looks like easy objective number to look at. In general, I consider there are two big categories of throughput. One is close proximity throughput, which is basically the max throughput when you have the client device right next to the access point. The other is probably more important for most home users in a practical sense, the range of throughput. The range of the Wi-Fi coverage and range throughput are closely correlated, but not necessarily the same. One may have a Wi-Fi connection up to, let's say, three rooms away, but the throughput may be too low for video streaming. In such case, there is a range of coverage, but the range throughput may be too low for the Wi-Fi use you need. The most important throughput number for home use is throughput at your typical device using area. In order to measure the max throughput, I had my iPhone about 5 feet away from the each target access point with full line of sight. These test results showed four facts. Average throughput were moderately higher on R750. Max throughput was slightly higher on U6 Pro. Minimum throughput was significantly higher on R750. Wi-Fi efficiency of Unify is 50 or 57%, while Rukus was consistent 63%. Now let's try to interpret each result. The difference in average throughput depicts the real-world benefit where a continuous large file transfer taking place, such as downloading or uploading files where Wi-Fi is acting as a bottleneck. If you are doing file transfer within the local network like NAS server, you will likely to see the difference. However, if you have an internet service that's slower than these numbers, you are unlikely to see the benefit. Max throughput is irrelevant as it's just a single instant of burst throughput. It's unpredictable number. This number will not practically affect anything we do. Personally, most interesting result was the minimum throughput difference. On U6 Pro, this happened almost always at the very first measure. My recollection of prior iPath tests on other Unify access points, I think this has always been the case. For this reason, I had always thought this is analogous acceleration time in vehicles. However, in case of R750, first data point is near its peak and almost never the minimum. How could this result potentially affect the end user's daily experience? Smaller the data it is, more likely this value becomes important. Since there are overheads and other factors, the numbers don't directly translate, but to simply put, R750 could in theory transfer 75 megabytes of data in one second, while Unify would start 12.5 megabytes per second. It could in theory take up 6 seconds to reach to that number by Unify. Though Unify will ramp up quickly, it's probably be more 3 to 4 seconds. So does this 2 to 3 seconds difference matter? Interestingly, some says 2 seconds is the threshold for e-commerce website. For myself, I certainly appreciate web page loading instantly over wait for a few seconds. In fact, if multiple pages start taking a few seconds to load, I start getting a bit impatient. Since many of our Wi-Fi use involves smaller data transfer rather than large file transfer, I think this number may be more important than average throughput in many cases. This is just my hypothesis, but I have noticed internet browsing are smoother with Ruka's setup. Previously, taking 1 to 2 seconds web page loading is now often instantaneous. So I am guessing this may be what's going on. Wi-Fi efficiency is calculated using Wi-Fi 6 2x2 80 MHz channel width, which is expected to have PHY link speed of 1200 megabits per second. So it simply calculated average throughput divided by 1200. Usually this has been believed to be 
in the max range between 50 to 70 percent. Unified's official site also says 50 to 60 percent. Having consistent higher Wi-Fi efficiency is one of a good proof of the quality of the hardware. I have measured throughput using iPerf throughout my home. Certain areas of throughput differences are explained by the simple fact one system had an access point closer to the client while the other didn't. So those numbers are not reflecting of the range throughput difference. For this comparison, three particular areas of throughput are usable. Family room, storage, dining slash kitchen. Family room throughputs were measured in the same room as each access point, about 20 feet away within the line of sight to the access point. Here, similar to max throughput, average throughput of the Rukas for this range was higher than that of U6 Pro by 6% which is coincidentally identical to the minimum difference between the average max throughput test result. Storage room located in the corner of the basement is surrounded by concrete wall. So despite having a basement unified access point facing towards its way, the primary access point supply was believed to be from the family room access point. The different throughput here is even more significant than the 20 feet. This data point actually have more interesting detail, which will be more related to range capability. So I will come back to this later. Between the Rookus and Unify setup, dining and the kitchen access point and client's positions were simply reversed. Basically, when testing Unify, U6 Pro access point was in the dining corner and throughput was measured furthest away from the kitchen corner. Then, testing R750, access point was in kitchen corner and throughput was measured in dining corner adjacent to U6 Pro. So two setup essentially had the same distance, same obstacles in between. R750 at this distance essentially achieved equivalent of a max throughput of U6 Pro right next to it. In contrast, U6 Pro went down to 228 megabits per second. So there are almost three times throughput difference at this distance. Range throughput are consistently higher with R750 at the equidistance. If anyone is paying attention and try to look at the test condition, you may notice M room located right next to the family room have significantly lower throughput with R750 than the U6 Pro. This includes Unify outperforming Rukas despite what appears to be equidistant from the access point. There are two potential explanations for this. One is directional nature of access points. I have had both Rukas and Unify access point in family loom facing away from M room in wall mount position. This means iPhone was connected to these access points at their rear or side lobes, which were not recommended Wi-Fi connection by manufacturers. They are leaking spilled Wi-Fi signal coverage area. Alternatively, and most likely explanation is, for Unify setup, there was a U6 Pro in the basement hallway facing towards M bedroom. So I think with Unify setup, the client were most likely associated with the access point instead of Family Loom one. Although I could have easily confirmed this if I had noticed the difference before taking down the Unify setup, but I didn't, so I didn't actually confirm this. Next, let's specifically look at the range of Wi-Fi coverage. The actual mileage and even end-user experience will vary significantly for this part. This is because the range of coverage highly depends on your home environment and what you do at a certain distance would be totally different from mine. First, we're going to take a look at the specification and compare them. It's important to know that area of coverage on the specification sheet are highly unreliable for home use purpose. This is because most homes have many obstacles including rooms, various objects, lower ceiling, and so on. These factors can affect Wi-Fi range significantly. For example, our 
5,800-square-foot ranch-style home with walk-out basement creates some Wi-Fi unfriendly areas, particularly in the basement. This has consistently required me to use significantly more number of mesh nodes or access points on all my previous setup that are well over the specified area of coverage number from any vendors. Each of those I have started with small number of units but ended up purchasing more to eliminate dead spot to attain target throughput in various areas. These vendors include Netgear Obi, Eero Pro, Asus AI Mesh, and Unify. Instead, more objective two more parameters that we care for Wi-Fi range are transmission power and receiver sensitivity. Transmission power indicates how loud the access point can talk. This represents how far a signal can be pushed from the access point. The standard unit uses here is decibel milliwatts, dBm. This is a logarithmic scale unit, so difference in 3 dBm means twice the power consumption. In case of access point coverage, higher the number, louder and longer range it can cover. With R750 having higher transmission power than U6 Pro on both 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz bands, we expect better coverage by R750. In fact, the only U6 model that have a compatible transmission power to R750 is U6 long range, and that's only for 2.4 GHz band. No U6 model matches transmission power of R750 in 5 GHz band. As in real life's communication, Wi-Fi communication requires both talking as well as listening. In Wi-Fi, the ability to listen is represented by reception sensitivity. This indicates how subtle of the signal that access point can pick up or hear. All Rookus access point has these values clearly depicted for each band. However, I could not find these numbers for Unify access points. So do we really care about this? I believe we do. Please do not quote me on this, but I believe the mismatch between access points, transmission power, and receiver sensitivity explain weird situations where our client devices looks like having strong Wi-Fi signal from the access point, yet we keep getting disconnect. In such case, I believe client devices can receive data from access point due to access point's high transmission power, but client device cannot talk as loud as access point, so the data sent back to access point from the client can reach much less distance, so if access point weren't able to capture the whispering radio back from the client, it becomes just one-way communication. In one area of my home, I believe this may be exactly what happening, which I will reference during real-world comparison section. Another important part of the specification for range is 2.4 GHz band. In current era, if we are looking for high throughput, stable internet, we usually only care about 5 GHz band. However, higher frequency radio has less range, so if one is looking for a longer range of Wi-Fi coverage, one needs to start really looking into 2.4 GHz. This is well depicted by Unify's access point naming convention. Unify has access point named U6 long range. When we look at its specification, it's the 2.4 GHz band where this has higher transmission power over any other U6 access point in their lineup, while 5 GHz band transmission power remains the same to U6 Pro or U6 Enterprise series. Despite 5 GHz band is preferred band for Wi-Fi use, many IoT devices only support 2.5 GHz, and not infrequently, these devices are placed in the areas distant away from access points. So, this can still be relevant to home use. Currently, there are two primary Wi-Fi versions of 2.4 GHz band, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 4. 
R750 has 4x4 2.4 GHz band and its Wi-Fi 6 version, while U6 Pro has 2x2 in this band. In fact, currently Unify does not have any 4x4 Wi-Fi 6 compatible 2.4 GHz band access point. U6 long range model has 4x4 MIMO, but it uses Wi-Fi 4 standard. Whether this matters or not comes down to one's user scenario, but small net builder performed early Wi-Fi 6 testing using consumer gears a while back, and one of conclusion they said in general, 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi 6 performance was better behaved than 5 gigahertz. So if you have Wi-Fi 6 capable client that requires to use 2.4 gigahertz, you could actually see the gain when coming from Wi-Fi 5 setup. Therefore, based on specifications for each access point, we expect better coverage by R750 than U6 Pro or SHD in my home. As for expected overall coverage area between 2 R750 and 3 U6 Pro with SHD setup, I use some of all access points transmission power for each setup. For Unify setup, this calculated 1510 milliwatt for 5 gigahertz band, while 2 R750 was 1260 milliwatt. So, I expected better overall coverage by 4 Unify access point setup. With my original optimal Unify setup for attaining high throughput, almost every corner of my home consisted of 5 access points, which calculated to be 1908 milliwatts. This would be very compatible to 3 R750, which is 1890 milliwatt. Now, let's see how all these numbers translated into the real-world experience for me. As expected, based on the throughput, Rukus had overall less area of high throughput coverage in comparison to Unify setup. However, to my surprise, this was only manifested again as just a lower throughput in multiple areas of basement. Otherwise, I was still able to get actual 5 GHz band connections throughout entire house. The lowest average IPARF measured was basement bathroom and basement bedroom. These areas were known to be poor Wi-Fi reception site at our home, and indeed, one of the main reasons I had to purchase extra mesh nodes and access points in my previous setups. With Rooker's setting, I was still able to see number above 150 megabits per second in these areas. For individual access point ranges comparison, I think the best spot to look is storage room. This is located in the walkout basement partly surrounded by concrete walls. This is where my network rack, hardwired NAS servers are located. This is definitely one of the most hostile environments for Wi-Fi to reach in my home. Both Unify and Rooker setup have an access point placed just above the area, but these access points are facing west, which is opposite direction to storage due to my mounting preference or limitation. Average throughput was significantly higher with R750. However, the real noticeable thing is that in this area, Unify kept losing connection. This is shown by IPERF test number of minimum throughput, zero. This kept occurring despite multiple IPERF test runs. So this clearly depicts a single Rukus R750 having better area of coverage. Now, this is only my hypothesis, but it is interesting that Unify access point still was able to get 251 max throughput and average 146 megabits per second throughput, despite keep losing connection. I think this is where transmission receiver mismatch could be happening. While getting data from access point may still be okay, whatever the signal the iPhone tries to respond back to access point may be too weak for the U6 Pro to catch or hear, and therefore there are times 
they lose connections to each other. Next, let's take a look at what I categorize as stability-related end-user experience. In this category, I will be specifically comparing device compatibility, system stability, connection stability, and roaming. Although this may not be actual stability issue, but I have had a few issues in the past for adding new devices onto my Unify Wi-Fi network. During my three and a half years of Unify Wi-Fi network experience, I had a couple memorable instances. The most recent one was Rakio Sprinkler Controller. Despite following the step-by-step -step instruction and trying to multiple times connecting to the access point, the controller kept failing to join IoT network or any other Wi-Fi network. Eventually, I ended up forcing Rakio controller connecting to kitchen iMac and then set up that way. This did the trick. Once I got it connected, it had remained connected and never gave me an issue. I'm not sure if this was an issue of Unify side or Rakio controller. Outside of that single instance, I might have had a few minor issues, but all were relatively easily solved and not caused any memorable issues. So I've been really happy with Unify Wi-Fi taking various IoT devices I'm throwing at them. For Ruka's setup, despite it was not recommended practice, I decided to create matching SSID and password on Ruka's to original Unify network with a hope all devices just join back on the Rukas Unleashed version of network. And most of the devices actually did, except for two groups of devices. These were Sonos and the Unify Protect. I have a few Sonos speakers in my home. Individual speakers were able to automatically connect it to Rukas serving Wi-Fi. However, 5.1 home theater setup speakers lost their configuration after Rooker's network conversion. So I tried to recreate the grouping, but it kept failing at the grouping step. This could not be resolved even after factory resetting Sonos speakers. Eventually, I decided to take approach where wiring one Sonos speaker. This creates what they call Sonos Net. Essentially, Sonos creates its own 2.4 GHz mesh network. Personally, I did not like the concept as I thought it would create source of channel interference in the 2.4 GHz band. But I had no choice in here. Immediately after choosing this approach, everything worked as expected and haven't had any issues since. Another group of devices that lost Wi-Fi connection are Unify's own gears, Unify Doorbell Pro and its associated two chimes. This actually turned out to be simply a configuration issue. For these devices, Unify created its own SSID, so all I had to do was go back to the Unify controller setting for Doorbell Pro and change to IoT network. Then factory reset two smart chimes and reconfigure have them connect to IoT network as well. This process did not have any issue. Overall, I think both systems seem highly compatible to various type of IoTs. One part of stability is whether the system as a whole can continue to function without frequent reboot. This is one main reason I moved away from consumer-graded network gears. In case of Unify, it is difficult to and impractical to isolate Unify access points from underlying UDM Pro and Unify network controller, as my Unify access point setup has always been running under UDM Pro controller. Anytime I've faced issues with Unify network, it's been pretty much related to new firmware update, specifically Unify network application or Unify OS. Despite I was fairly careful not to use beta or release candidate, there were a period of times where official release version resulted in consumer year level of unstable network where they required me to restore previous version of hardware or even trying out beta firmware for the hope of getting 
usable network back again. However, this has not happened for a while. Lately, the system uptime has been equal to the last firmware update. At this point, I have no problem calling Unify as a rock solid system. Rucus has been rock solid as well, but I've been using this just over two weeks. So I can't say for long term stability, though I have relatively high confidence in this regard as one of the main compliments Rucus Wire system receives on the internet is indeed rock solid stability. Another component of stability is if a client device can keep its connection once Wi Fi connection is established. With the Unify setup, I had two clients that could not explain why they kept disconnecting. Unify Smart Chime, Bowers and Wilkins Formation Series Smart Speakers. The first device is Unify's own product, Unify Smart Chime. This happens on Lucas setup as well, and in fact, that's how I noticed the issue has been happening. Basically, I see unpredictable flashing of smart chimes that I didn't think of any initially. However, with the recent Lucas setup, I have been carefully monitoring if any device have dropped or disconnected unexpectedly, and that's how I found out. Unify smart chime gets disconnected on Lucas setup and not always but frequently seem to coincide with the timing of these flashing lights. Based on this, I am assuming the same issue was happening with the Unify setup as I did notice flashing with Unify setup. However, I did not confirm this. Either way, they did reconnect and never had actual practical use issue. On the other hand, Bowers and the Wilkins Formation Free Smart Speakers disconnect were more permanent. Although I could not tell the exact timing when this happens, it is usually after a prolonged period of speaker not used, which means days to weeks. Usually when this happened, I had to reboot those speakers and they naturally connected back. However, occasionally, I had to reset and start over full setting to get grouped speakers functionality back up. With Rukas, so far I have not seen any single disconnect with Bauer and the Wilkins. However, I am still experiencing random disconnect issue with Unify Smart Chimes. Sometimes the connection lasts for a day or two, but other times only for an hour or less. This seems very unpredictable and random. Whenever this happens, the chime immediately connects back. So again, other than flashing lights, this has not caused any practical issues. I have tried to change DTIM setting between typically recommended 3 back to default 1. Initially this failed to fix the issue, but it was only for a day or two and then eventually I started back having the same issue. Roaming was one of the real issue I had with Unify setup. The first test for roaming is the most practical and relates to end user experience. I have walked around the house while having a Wi-Fi call. With Unify, I have consistently lost connection at the same spot of house for about 10 to 30 seconds. The disconnect was long enough that we had to repeat part of a conversation. With Rookus setup, there is zero disruption when using SSID with Wi-Fi call setup enabled. If I use regular home SSID without such setup, most of the time there is zero disruption and occasionally I hear the under one second brip. The worst case is I may lose one or two words, so no need to really repeat anything. Wi-Fi call setup in Ruka seems relatively unique feature that I have never came across with Unify setup before. This is basically a seamless roaming for Wi-Fi call between Wi-Fi and cellular network. It's free and very simple to set up. Next. To test roaming, I have used more data-driven testing. 
The first one is ping test. On this test, I simply run a ping command on my iPhone and work around the home. The data transfer with ping is so small, this is simply just testing if the active connection is remaining. While both systems showed increased in ping time as I get closer to known roaming spot in house, Unify actually drops multiple consecutive pings. With Rukus, at most they drop one ping, but more than half of the time, not even a single ping drop was noted. The second objective test I used is Wi-Fi Sweet Spot app on iOS device. This application continuously measures connection speed and also shows which access point the client device is connected, so I know exactly when roaming happens. However, this is much more data demanding app, so if the application loses data transfer for long enough, the app completely stops. With Unify setup, Wi-Fi sweet spots consistently completely stopped working at the loaming point. Rukus was also not able to sustain the app running most of the time, but occasionally it had moments able to keep the app going. Next, I'd like to briefly talk about various features from each setup. This alone can be a full write-up or video, but I'm still fairly new to Rukus and as a casual network hobbyist, there are a lot of features that I have not fully investigated on Unify side. So this is a brief comparison of what I have noticed so far. The first main feature set I like to compare is what I categorize as radio resource management related. In this category, I am basically comparing various features that allow optimal Wi-Fi setup for us as a home user. One of the fun and challenging part of a Wi-Fi network is the fact that Wi-Fi performance are highly affected by both static and dynamic environmental factors. So I believe there is no one-size-fit-all setting if you are looking for an optimal Wi-Fi performance. This is illustrated by the fact enterprise-graded gears, crowd subscription, emphasize AI-driven radio resource management as one of the key feature. So what tools do each setup provide for us? On Unify side, there is nearly non-existent. A while back, Unify had what's called Wi-Fi AI. This was described as Wi-Fi AI uses your access points to determine the best and optimal channel configuration based on traffic, deployment size, density, and client factors. You should choose time to run when most Wi-Fi clients are not around. This sounded a perfect automatic enterprise graded radio resource management system. However, it never optimized anything and not infrequently users reported they could actually make it worse. That good example is if I executed this, Unify chose the same channel for 2.4 GHz band for two access points that are located physically close to each other and they were using max transmission power. The latter was true because despite there is auto setting on transmission power, it is always set to the max and never did anything. Now, they have changed the wording and it simply says optimize channelization, which selects channel. This sounds like quite a downgrade from original Wi-Fi AI that Unify probably wanted to implement. So practically speaking, again, with Unify setup, you need to really manually configure your own access points to get a better performance. Despite Unleashed does not offer crowd controller sophisticated radio resource management, they do still support real automatic selection of channels for each access point and even adjust transmission power. This has been confirmed by actual use of the product. When I initially set up the access point in the evening, Two access points picked same channel on 2.4 GHz band. However, checking back next morning, they ended up being on the different channels. This is where having dedicated radio for access point environment surveillance becomes important. All Rukus access points that I have checked have capability of real-time background scanning. This means each access point can continue monitor its environment while serving Wi-Fi. 
since none of Unify 6 access point have the dedicated radio for this, they have to stop Wi-Fi service and use those antennas to survey its surrounding. However, this has a major drawback besides temporary loss of Wi-Fi. That is, survey result is not true reflection of actual Wi-Fi environment because access points are stopped, clients are disconnected, adjusting access point parameters based on inaccurate data points certainly result in suboptimal configuration at the best. Other radio resource management related features are band and load balancing. Band balancing puts clients on 2.5 versus 5 GHz band based on load on AP. Both Unify and Rookus support band balance option, but Unify does not do this with a clear way. It is just a checkbox to turn on or off. While Lucas allows users to select specific criteria and fine tune if needed. Load balance is for the balancing number of clients connected to each access point. I could not find the load balance option to unify, but the Rookus supports this with some fine tuning options. Private pre-shared key is a relatively new feature just recently introduced in Unify. This allows client device to connect to the same SSID but using different password. The benefit of this is to allow each of these passwords to use different VLANs. Rukus have had its own version of this technology called dynamic pre-shared key for a very long time. One practical use I can see for home user is let my kids use one password to connect to a single shared home Wi-Fi SSID, but when they are connected, I use VLAN that has content filters turned on. While my wife or I connect it, we use different password. With it, we get unfiltered access version of VLAN. However, Rukus's DPSK have multiple additional features as this technology was really developed for corporate use. In Rukus, you can set password expiration. You can also have the system create random passwords upon the first time logging into your network so you don't have to manage it. You can limit the number of clients who can use a certain password. There are various potential use cases for this in home setting. For example, you can have each family member have their own password to connect to the same Wi-Fi. This allows easy identification of which device belongs to Foo. You can easily see how useful combination of these extra settings can be for guests. Although we could certainly seem to use PPSK for guest Wi-Fi at home, I think in actual practice, it's much easier to use dedicated guest Wi-Fi setup on both systems. This feature allows easy creation of guest Wi-Fi on both systems. This allows each client on the SSID to be isolated so they can't communicate with other devices on the same SSID, as well as it also prevents from accessing underlying wired network. Each have also ability to have customizable captive screen options, including option to use social media login for authentication. I've tried both and both worked as intended and was fairly easy to set up. Nice graphical user interface alone can be important factor, especially for attracting wider audience. Poorly designed user interface alone could make people to not want to use the application. Unify has clean, what I feel, stylish design. For example, they have topology screen that can show animated dynamic data flow. Although this is technically a feature of Unify network controller, if you use Unify AP, all wirelessly connected clients show up on here as well. In contrast, Lucas's unleashed controller screen is very simple. It's very intuitive. I do not believe there is any data that I can't find on Lucas on the screen that Unify has, but just not with nice visual like Unify's topology map. It's worth mentioning that Unify has better visual appeal, but they aren't perfect. Initially, topology had almost always wrong rank. I think this has improved, 
but I still see certain wired device suddenly disappearing from edit topology. Also, Unify tries to automatically detect connected device and even give a nice icon for it. They are often wrong and you cannot upload your own picture, so it sort of defeats the purpose. Both systems can be set up as an standalone access point or as a part of local controller based system. I prefer using controllers, especially with multiple access points set up. With this, the main part of setup is when you're setting up the controller for Unify, I used UDM Pro, so I went through step by step configuration three and a half years ago. For Rook is Unleashed, the first access point on the network serves as a master controller while still functioning as access point. Any additional access points added afterward will copy that configuration. So in an event, if master controller access point becomes unavailable, another one can immediately take over. Ruka sells their access points with Unleashed firmware pre-installed or standalone other mode of operation standard version. This is distinguished by model numbers. Standalone version has 901 starting, while Unleashed version has 9U1. At the time of my purchase, standalone version was cheaper on Amazon, so I purchased them instead of Unleashed model. This required me to take one extra step of flashing Unleashed firmware on it. Once that's done, I just follow step-by-step -step instruction to set up first SSID on Rook's access point. These were all done through computer browser by accessing IP address of the access point. Both systems have mobile option, so I think you can set these access points through the app, but not flashing firmware. Once the controller is running, adding new access points to each system are much simpler. For Unify, once plugged in, either app or controller through the browser recognize new Unify device on the network. So you just hit adopt and ready to go. For Rookus, this is what's supposed to happen as well. Except, you must have the matching firmware version to master controller. Although Rookus was supposed to automatically upgrade new access points to matching version hardware, it did not happen to me. I waited 30 minutes or so and access point adoption was stuck at updating firmware step. So I just downloaded firmware from official website and through the controller admin menu on browser, I have chosen manual local firmware install. Within five minutes, all was up and running. I don't know if the Rookus server was down or my firewall prevented a firmware download or perhaps original purchase was standalone version has something to do with it. Wi-Fi performance can be affected by various factors. With multiple access points set up, as well as neighboring using Wi-Fi, interference is the main challenge. You can't hear high resolution audio intricacy when there is construction going outside. In Wi-Fi Basic, you won't choose proper channel, channel width, and adjust transmission power to minimize these interferences. You could get lucky and default set of these numbers may provide sufficient performance. In which case, my motto is keep it simple and do no harm. So near optimal is the better than absolute optimal because the latter has risk of screwing up something and also effort to put in may not be worth the gain. And given Wi-Fi environment being dynamic entity, what's optimal may not be optimal later. With Unify, as discussion in future section, there is no real automatic radio resource management to choose these parameters at reasonable level. So if Wi-Fi performance is suboptimal, whether at the start or suddenly happening one day, you may need to investigate this in on your own and make proper adjustment to fix it. With Rookus, there are a basic radio resource management system that makes, at least in Raymond's eye, reasonable choices. For example, upon the initial setup, Rookus chose same channel for 2.4 GHz band on two access points. Next morning, they were separated. 
Later, I ended up adding a third access point, and the same thing happened. And eventually, all three were using three separate channels. While Unify had put many, even adjacent access points, on the same channels. For some users, especially in the home setting, access points cosmetics are an important factor. Unify has a nice, clean, non-obtrusive look. While Rook's R750 doesn't necessarily look ugly, it is bigger and look like indeed an electronic device hanging on the wall or ceiling. In home use, my wife does not like the R750's look when compared to Unify access points, especially since I'm hanging one of them in the kitchen corner where everybody can see. Ever since I switched from consumer gear, where all-in-one network device is a norm, I have been really enjoying a modular system design, which gives a great scalability of the network. Just as in this case, I can try out just changing access points without changing entire network like router, switches, or firewall. In this regards, both are access points units, while Rukus can act as router, I'm not using that functionality. So here for scalability comparison, I am focusing on access points catalog. This can be important for those who care about being able to have an option to try out the latest technology, or alternately, someone interested in bargain price deal by going with previous generation technologies. At the moment, Unify offers 6E access points, while Rukus does not offer 6E compatible unleashed firmware version. However, Rukus have already Wi-Fi 7 unleashed compatible access point on their website, including its full specification, and which is planned to be released in December. Finally, let's look at the cost difference. There is no exact matched comparison models between two companies' catalog, which makes price comparison difficult. Better hardware, of course, could cost more, but when some elements of hardware is better, while the other parts aren't, it's hard to say which one is more appropriately priced. If someone is just focusing on the Wi-Fi standard and MIMO, or labeled max throughput numbers, Rukus looks as if overpriced for no reason. However, if you've watched this video this far, you've seen there are several other internal hardware design that allows a Rukus to have better performance in certain areas, and that accounts for at least part of higher pricing. Two major underlying hardware differences are hardware that allow Lucas to perform real-time Wi-Fi environment surveillance, and its proprietary hardware-based antenna modulation technology, BeamFlex Press. These technologies contribute to actual end-user experience difference. However, how much of the price difference are we talking about? When comparing R750 and top-of-the-line Unify access point U6 Enterprise, where the price of R750, currently $650 on Amazon, I could have easily purchased two brand new Unified Wi-Fi 6E capable access points. Based on transmission power difference, estimated coverage of single unit R750 could still outperform two units of U6 6E, while five gigahertz band will have better coverage with two units of Unify 6E. Also, with two properly placed and tuned units, there should be more areas of higher throughput coverage attainable by Unify's two access points approach. One thing worth mentioning is that Rukus access point lists IoT onboard as feature for these access points. What this means is they have dedicated IoT hardwares for BLE and Zigbee, and potentially expendable via USB port. However, 
This feature requires subscription plan to use, so this is irrelevant for most home users. So, which system is better for premium home Wi-Fi experience? The obvious answer is, it depends on one's need. In summary, there are noticeable end-user experience improvement with two Rukus R750 setup over the three Unify U6 Pro and one SHD multiple access point setup for me. However, they are essentially twice the cost associated with the Rukus. So the question which one is better really comes down to answering the question, does the improvement in end user experience with Rukus justify the extra cost? I think Unify would be a great system for those who want to continuously renew their Wi-Fi setup to newer technology. Their large catalog of selections from valuing affordable price points really helps this. If you already have Unify network set up, a single controller interface for entire network and access points is certainly more convenient than going into two different controllers. If your primary method of troubleshooting is to ask community, Unify have much larger community base so you are much more likely to get response from other users on the official forum, Reddit, or other forums. If you do not have a problem paying potentially two times price or cost, or alternatively okay to use last generation technology to save the money, but looking for hand-free, nearly optimized, rock-solid system, Rukus's built-in extra hardware will give you superior performance with true radio resource management. If you need better 2.4 GHz band performance because need a better range, Wi-Fi 6 compatibility, Rukus gears have more emphasis on this. If you need a better Wi-Fi coverage per access point base, maybe due to limitation of where you can place multiple access points, Rukus lineup offers higher transmission power access points as well as additional internal hardware to further enhance them. In the end, I have chosen to keep Rukus set up myself. This is because Wi-Fi is a very crucial part of our family. I work from home a few days a week and having seamless Wi-Fi call is very important. We also noticed more responsible internet browsing experience with Ruka's setup. Our family members like to continue streaming video as if they are background music. I like to play with Wi-Fi setting, but I want to know what I am doing. So having official detailed document is something I truly appreciate. Thanks for watching.